There are a ton of budgeting apps out there that promise to get you out of debt and that you'll never miss a payment again. And they may work, but I don't use them, so I don't know. Welcome back to Master of None. I'm your host, Kyle, as usual. And today we're going to talk about budgets. But before we get there, be sure to share, like, leave comments, and watch the whole video to massage the YouTube algorithms so the channel can grow and I can keep making videos. Thank you. But let's cut straight to it. There's no such thing as a universal budget. Everybody has different income levels, different expense levels, different life philosophies, different worth spending money on categories, etc. So don't try to find that one silver bullet budget. Deuces. Yo, man, this YouTube stuff is easy. Now I'm back. I really can't get away with it because you can see how long the video is before you click on it, whatever. But what is a budget? If you do a quick Google search, it will give you budget car rental services, and that's not what you want. So thankfully, I'm here to direct you in the right path. For starters, it's an estimate. Unless you work like a salaried job or you have another set amount of income, you're not going to know your income month to month. And similarly goes with your expenses. You're not always going to know exactly what they are every month. So essentially a budget is you estimating how much you're going to be making and how much you're going to be spending for X amount of time. And how closely you're able to maintain that budget is based off of many different circumstances, but mostly based off of your discipline. One really popular budget among the youths is the 50-20-30 rule, where you spend 50% of your income on your core needs, 20% on savings and debt, any future money goals, and 30% is on your wants or whatever it is that you're into. Another example is the envelope rule spoken highly by Dave Ramsey, although I literally don't know anybody who does that. There's all kind of budgets for different stages of life, different demographics, age specifically is what I mean there. But simply put, at the core of all of them is how much money are you making and how much are you spending? And furthermore, are you spending less than you're making? None of these budgeting rules are necessary to live by, but they're a good base for a beginning budgeter. Starting this channel has let me know that I like lists, so here's another list. Track everything. You will need a base for your budget. To get a basis for your budget, you have to first look at your history. So pull your last three to six pay stubs, see how much you've made, and then look at all of your expenses for that same amount of time. And then detail those expenditures in excruciating detail. Instead of just putting utilities, put electricity, gas, water, trash, all that stuff. Unless, of course, those things are already lumped together. I'm a little old school in this regard where I use an Excel spreadsheet, but you can use whatever is helpful for you. Be a realist. There once was a young prophet by the name of Aubrey who said, know yourself and know your worth. Be realistic about what you make and what you spend. That's why it's important to itemize every last detail that you can in your budget. And don't plan for what you think future self might be making, but plan for what you know right now. You can readjust later if future self does better. Hey there. For instance, if your budget rule says 20% of your expenses are on savings and debt, but in reality, 60% of your income is going to debt, then you need to readjust other aspects and areas of life or else you will find yourself further in debt. Treat percentage as prince, not king. Use those recommended percentages as a litmus test for your limits. Meaning when you're making a budget, don't try to live at that upper limit, but try to undercut that as much as possible. But then you have those expenses that don't really fluctuate, like your mortgage or your rent. And that's really where percentage should be prints. If you rule everything off of percentages, when you make more money, then obviously you can afford to live in a more expensive place. But you don't have to. Which leads to the next point, no life inflation. Life inflation is the very thing that I just spoke of. Once you make more, then you spend more. You don't have to do that. I urge you to not spend more just because you make more. Remember, you managed to live with less before, so how much do you really need is the question you should ask yourself. If your housing cost is currently 30% of your income, then you get a raise and now it's only 25%, that doesn't mean you have to go and find something that's actually 30% again. 
you can use that yeah. extra five percent and invest it somewhere else build in a cushion don't expect yourself to meet your budget categories every month to counter that round up to the nearest hundred on your fluctuating expenses and then round down on your monthly income that's just a small cushion to keep you in the game a little bit have every cent accounted for literally budget out 101 percent of all of your income have zero dollars unaccounted for and last but not least have a goal or a few goals this can literally be anything it can be going to ball out at a sporting event or going to travel going to a nice restaurant whatever anything that will keep you motivated because this is a long and sometimes painful process my personal slogan is debt free by 2023 that's my small motivator for when i just want to quit my job at any given moment Thank you for watching. Join me next Monday where I will go further in detail about this mini series of budgeting. Again, remember to like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments below. Thank you. Deuces. Is the elephant heavy? I'm coming back, baby.